GarageBand is an incredible tool for all musicians because it allows you to create high quality music and having that kind of power is a game changer. My name is Mike. I am a full-time musician and music instructor from the UK. No matter who or where you are, you can create incredible pieces of music. Next, we're gonna look at our virtual keyboard. So to find that, we're gonna to come to Plus, and here's our keyboard. So you can see at the bottom here, we've got Smart Piano, Alchemy Synth, and Sampler. Now we're gonna to come to each of these individually, uh, but first, let's just tap on the keyboard, and it should bring up something like this. So it may sound really obvious, but to play this, we're just gonna press down with our fingers. To change the sound of our keyboard, we've just got to press up here, and we've got tons of different sounds, loads of cool like organs, electric pianos, and we've got loads of synths over here which we're gonna look at in a sec. So let's start with our classic grand, because that was a good place to start. So over here to the left, we've got our octave selector, so it's gonna just take us down the octave, or further down the piano. We can go even further, and equally we can go up, and another one up, but it does stop at about four. And then we've got our sustain toggle here, so we can switch that on, and this is gonna sustain those notes for us. Or, if you'd like a bit more control over your sustain, once you press it down, it's gonna sustain, and whenever you take it off, it's gonna act like a piano pedal would, and we can get a bit more control over our sustain that way. This next button here gives us a couple different options for our keyboard. So this is really cool. We can select like a double keyboard if you wanna play like this. I'm not much of a keyboard player, as you can probably tell. Um, you can also change how many keys are displayed, so it might be a bit easier on this setting where the keys are a bit bigger. But if you're an absolute madman and you wanna go for a setup like this, you can do that too. Although I don't know how you do that because they're so tiny. So let's just go back to our standard sort of view and I'm gonna change it to the nice thick ones so it's nice and easy. So we have a couple different options here as well. We've got our velocity controls. So once we switch that on, you'll notice that this pops up on the left. So this is gonna give us more control over the velocity of the instrument. So if we tap it nice and gently, it's gonna make a quieter note. But if we tap it harder, it's gonna make a louder note. So this is really good, but it can be quite easy to accidentally tap a bit too hard because it's not quite as good as playing on a real keyboard. So we can select the velocity we want to work within. So if you want it to be quite quiet, we can take the top end right down and it's gonna be more controlled in the sort of mid zone. But equally, if we wanna make every note really loud, we can bring it up like this. So you can just, yeah, narrow down the kind of playing you want to achieve. And then we have our key controls. So once we switch that on, you're going to see here, it's going to give us some different options to, as to how we move up and down the keyboard. So in glissando, we're going to just be static. But if we press it again, it's going to go on to scroll. Now we can move the keyboard up and down manually. And you can see there where we are on the keyboard. Next here we have our arpeggiator. Let's turn that on and see what that does. So what an arpeggiator does, it's gonna play the notes that we have pressed down. It's gonna match it to the tempo of our song and it sounds a little bit like this. How cool, right? And this can be as complex or as simple as you want. So we can do a load of things to change how that arpeggiator works. If we press on that again, you can see we've got some options here. So we can change the note order. We can have the notes play as I've played them. So if I go up here first and then down here, and then in the middle, it's gonna play them in the order that I've pressed. But if I want them to just go up, I can select that here. And then no matter what order I press them down on, 
the notes are always going to ascend up. Equally, I can go down. It can go up and then down. Or we can make it random. Which gives us a really cool sort of varied riff. Awesome. So I'm going to leave it on as played for now. Um, and then we can also change the note rates. So this is just basically how quickly those notes are being played. And then 132, which is going to be crazy. Uh, we've got dotted, so this is just going to be a bit varied. And then we've got triplets. And lastly, we've got our octave range. So you may have noticed as I was playing there, it wasn't only playing the notes I've pressed down, it also plays them in an octave above. So we can change how many octaves our arpeggiator runs through here. So the minute it's on two, if I select one, it's going to be really clear what I'm pressing down. And then if I want to make it two octaves, I can make it three. So one last thing about the arpeggiator, if we have it on, you'll see there's a latch control over here. So if we switch that on and then play our arpeggiator, it's going to lock in place once we press the notes down. So that means that I can just press over here or press down over there and it's going to play it for me hands free. And once we say play a chord in, so like this, it's going to loop round and then I can change the pitch of that chord by just pressing one note at a time. So you see the chords become lower. So we can play around with the pitch of that chord. So you may have noticed when I was switching around the keyboard sounds earlier that there's a couple of different options when we click on some different pianos. So you can see here on this electric piano, we've got a pitch control and we've got some awesome effects over here. So like I said earlier, there's going to be tons of effects on these virtual instruments. Just have a really good play around with them. There's really no right or wrong answer to a lot of these effects. They're purely just to add like character to the instrument that's being played. And the best way of finding out what each effect does is just to turn it right up. Don't be afraid to experiment. There's really, like I said earlier, no right or wrong. And it's just about having fun as well. I think you'll often come up with cool little riffs and cool little ideas just from playing around with the effects and having fun with it. So that's gonna be a bit different on every kind of instrument we select. Apart from sort of more traditional sounding keyboard sounds, we've also got our alchemy synth. So these are gonna give us a load of different effects and options to muck around with. So as you can see here, Screen looks a little bit different. So we've got a pitch and a modifier. And then we've got some different preset effects here. So I can just move this blue box around and you can see over here, depending on where I move them, it's just gonna change all those effects for us. So it makes it nice and simple rather than just have to play with all those dials. So in this one keyboard sound alone, we've got tons of cool effects there. Now, if you wanted to go a bit more in depth into controlling those effects, you can slide over that top screen and you can get into the nitty gritty with all these controls. And it's worth noting on our alchemy synth and with a couple of other different keyboard sounds, we have another option here now. So we've got a cassando, our scroll, and we've also got pitch. So with this, we can basically use it almost like chaos pad or a touch pad. Let me go back to one of the more basic sounds. A 
and you see that blue dot, as we move it up and down, it's going to change the pitch of the note. And we could do this with multiple fingers and create some really cool stuff like that. So you may have noticed when we switched to our Alchemy synth, it's brought us up another button here. Now, if we press that, you notice our sort of square selector effecty thing is gonna go into the middle. Now, what we can do with this is move our device around and it's gonna change what effects being used or what presets being used. So if I play a chord and then move the iPad around, that effect preset is gonna change. So yeah, how cool is that? We can literally move our iPad around to make some cool sounds. So yeah, there's loads of cool things to be playing around with here. Have a good experiment and just have a good bit of fun. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.